Girls ready? I really like raising our animals this way because we can take what a lot of people think is waste products and turn them into good morning modern steaders. <sighs> Six degrees out this morning. Fahrenheit, little chilly. The cold mornings usually have clear skies or very few clouds in them. So you usually get some really beautiful sunrises, which is nice. Yesterday Willow was in heat again. So the first time we brought her to visit the buck, it didn't take. So yesterday we had to go back and bring her on another date. I'm hoping this one went well. I'm curious to see this one, how much she smells like a buck. Last time we could smell the buck on her for a good week. That's awesome making all that noise. I wonder if she's like, Willow, you stink. Huh? Is that what you're saying? You were telling Willow she smells funny? I don't smell anything this time. <laughs> Definitely a chilly morning this morning. This is really early for us to be this cold, and it's been this cold from November. So hopefully, it'll warm up earlier this year. Wishful thinking, but if bringing Willow to visit the buck yesterday worked, we should have kid goats around May 18th. Man. That's so exciting. It's gonna be a busy time of the year. It's usually when we get our pigs is in May, around Mother's Day usually. The project that we're gonna be building this year, that's about when we're gonna be starting to build it. They put road bands on the roads. Once all the snow and ice starts melting, Big trucks can't travel on some roads, and the main road that we live off of, they banned in the in the springtime. And the road bands usually come off in May, so that means we can't get like heavy equipment in to deliver stuff. You can't get concrete delivered. So, unfortunately, the big project this year we can't start till May. But we can work on building our compost for this coming year. And after we get done taking care of the animals, we're going to do that. So, <clears throat> Willow's milk production is still super low today. And that's one of the reasons why I thought she'd been going into heat. Is whenever she goes into heat for then a day or two, her milk production drops off drastically and then after she goes into heat which means she's ready to get bread um, a couple of days after she's been in heat her milk production picks back up so she was in heat yesterday we had a good visit fingers crossed exciting times coming up Willow exciting times you girls look nice and warm with your big thick winter coats on You're almost done, Willow. She's like, hey, dude, leave me alone. I'm trying to eat. Are you ready to come out? Come on. Nope, you don't need that food. You've had plenty. Go for it. I hope you're pregnant this time, Willow. The reason we're breeding Willow is to keep her in milk production. We have to dry her off here pretty shortly. And then once she has her kids again, she'll be back into milk. I'm not sure if we're gonna keep any of her kids this year. Um, we do wanna grow our milking herd. Blossom and Buttercup, we will breed this coming fall. I'd like to get a buck. And actually, with our new plans coming, my goal is, is to keep the old goat barn and put the male goats in there, or a male goat in there. And if we get a male goat, 
we can use that goat to breed Blossom, Buttercup, Willow, and if we kept any of Willow's babies, we could breed the babies to him too when they're old enough. So, it's cold out and it's taking my breath away a lot faster. We've been getting a lot of people asking us about our five, 10 year goals. If you'd like us to do a video on that, leave it in the comments down below. And then I have some really big dreams that I'd like to do. If you'd like to hear that, leave it in the comments down below. It's been so cold out. We burnt through all that firewood we brought in the other day. You ready to go out and feed the chickens of New York City? Come on. Oh, I think this door is still frozen shut from yesterday. I never had a chance yeah. to open it. I'll have to get the ax out later. I had to rush out yesterday to get well out to the breeder in time. Didn't have a chance to get New York City's door unfrozen. I like feeding them right in the hay. It encourages them to scratch and peck it and keep it all stirred up. Look at that, we already got an egg. Nice and warm. Moose, you're quiet this morning. Why are you so quiet? I was hoping it was gonna warm up a little bit more this morning. But it hasn't. It's still only 11 degrees out outside. So, we're gonna suit up. We're gonna go outside and I wanna get our chickens working for us and give them something to do. It's been a long winter already. And it's not even the first day of winter yet. So we're gonna get our chickens making some compost for us. That's one thing about farming and homesteading. You always need to be thinking ahead. It's the middle of winter here, but we're already starting to plan for springtime. We're thinking spring baby goats. We're thinking springtime gardens. We're thinking springtime building projects. We need to order our seeds soon for our gardens. And I want to start building compost today for our gardens. You coming out, Pluto? Gotta need this. I gotta teach you to pull the sled with all your energy. That sun feels good, don't it? I noticed it's time to clean off their bunk bed. And I know the chickens will love this.
minutes, we'll get some fresh bedding. You like that fresh bedding there, Blossom? Where do you think of Pluto being out here? Huh? What are you doing? You want a sled ride? I wonder what you think. Woohoo! No? Okay. I want to get some more bedding and manure. I'm removing it from the thicker spots in the goat barn. We do do the deep bedding, but we can only keep it so deep in here, the way this barn's designed. So we'll remove some of the old stuff and bring it for the chickens. And there's gonna be so much stuff in here for the chickens, they're gonna love it. Yeah, they are. Jump in. You want to play, but they don't. I'm sure the chickens are going to love this. It's going to give them something to do. All right, you get your water and your feeder out for now. Let's get this out of our way. Watch out. You get this out for a minute. Girls ready? The chickens are gonna peck through that, scratch through it. They're gonna eat some of the manure. They're gonna eat some of the rye seeds left over or whatever was in the straw. And the other awesome thing about adding different animal manure in here is it confuses the pathogens. Most pathogens are just like go after one animal. So if you put a couple of animals in here, a couple of different animals manures in here, they don't know what to do and they get confused. And the chickens love it. looking for Look at you girls, going to town already. <laughs> I really like raising our animals this way because we can take what a lot of people think is waste products and turn them into productible products. We got our food scraps, the chickens are going to eat them, they're either going to turn them into meat, they're going to turn them into eggs. They're gonna turn it into compost. They're gonna turn it into chicken manure. It's gonna grow more food. We can take our goat bedding that's been soiled, put it in the chicken coop. The chickens are gonna scratch through it, peck through it, eat it. They're gonna have fun doing it. It's gonna keep them from being bored. And it's also gonna disrupt the pathogens and they're not gonna know what to do either. So it's a win-win it's all the way around. I'm spending money on feeding us. 
with the food scraps, we get to turn to other pro products. I'm spending money on bedding for our animals, but we get to turn that into a game for the chickens, and we get to turn it into compost for the garden. We got a few more fall decorations we need to chop up. So I'm, gonna, I'm trying to figure out the cost of homestead animals. Sometimes it's hard to do if you figure in all the benefits. If you're raising goats for milk, you got their bedding. You can either compost it directly, you can worm compost it, you can give it to your chickens. If you're raising chickens for meat birds, you're figuring the cost of the feed and then how much meat you get. What about the fertilizer you get that fertilizes your pasture or your lawn or wherever you're raising your pasture raised meat birds. Same with pigs, we raise pigs here. We get their manure, which we can compost and then grow more garden with it and then grow more vegetables with it. We put them to work, we have them dig them up, we have them clear land for us, prep garden spots. So when I'm thinking about how much does it cost to raise an animal, you get something for free. You either get the meat for free, the manure for free, or the work for free, or you get two things for free. We better save some of this for the chickens in New York City. We go bring them down some fresh bedding. When we're asked how much does it cost to raise a pig, we can figure it out how much it costs to raise the meat or chickens, how much it costs to feed that chicken for eggs and stuff like that. But a lot of the times you can't take into consideration. Right here we got a big compost pile and that's compost that we got from our winter pigs last winter, which is gonna grow an awesome garden this year. Over here, we have another big compost pile from our winter greenhouse and that's gonna grow even more delicious food for our family. How do you figure out what these compost piles are worth? It's all from pasture raised organically fed animals that we've had on our homestead. Also we're putting our animals to work so they're helping revitalize our pastures, our apple orchards. That's one thing I think about, it's like how much money does it cost to raise these animals? Or is it just more time and energy? It's hard to figure that out. What are your thoughts on that if you're raising animals? I understand it takes money, but in the bigger scheme of things, if you're trying to improve your farmland and improve your pastures for you, for your family, how do you figure out the cost? Now, I don't have the answer to that question. It's one of those questions that I think about quite a bit. I'll lie awake at night pondering and thinking about. To me, it kind of goes along with you get what you pay for. When you buy an expensive product, you're assuming you're paying up for it. You're paying the cost up front, but in the long run, it's gonna pay for itself. So is it the same way with raising our animals this way? It's gonna be interesting to see what happens over five, 10, 15, 20 years. There we go. Go out now. You go come out if I put some straw down out here. Got you some frozen pumpkins. Let me give you something to do. Oh, Moose, you're loud.
If you've been watching our channel for any length of time, you know I normally cook our whole chickens in the crock pot. Today we're gonna switch that up. I'm gonna make a brine solution using eight cups of water, half a cup of regular table salt, I want to make sure it's dissolved. Set the brine aside for one minute. I want to bring a bowl over that's big enough to hold our chicken. This is one of the chickens we raised here this past summer. I believe it's just barely going to fit. Yep. In here. I'm gonna cover it with saran wrap and let it sit in the fridge for at least one hour and no more than five hours. You want to get some carrot soap? Yeah. How many do we have in there? Four. I would say all of them. There's something that I can put my... We're going to roast some veggies and potatoes to go with our roasted chicken. The goats are going to love you when you bring them out some carrot pails, huh? Mm-hmm. After about an hour of the chicken sitting in that salt water brine, I took it out, stood it back up in the bowl, and let it dry in the fridge for about an hour. Now I'm gonna dry as much of it off as I can with paper towels. This is gonna help us get a crispier skin on the chicken. Roast and pan over. If your legs aren't tucked up nicely like this under a piece of skin, you can tie them up with a piece of butcher's twine. I'm gonna take some of my vegetables and line around the chicken. And put some onions inside for flavoring. And take some melted butter and brush it over the bird. Put some salt and pepper on the outside of it. I wanted to stuff the inside with herbs, tin. I have the oven preheated to 450 degrees. I'm gonna stick the bird in here for 15 minutes. Then we're going to turn the oven down to 350 degrees.
I'm gonna do preheat 350, start, and then kitchen timer, an hour, 30 minutes. Start. Bam, looks delicious. Ready to go collect some eggs and give the goats some carrots? Yeah. I thought you were pulling me. No. Come on. No. It's not fair. I thought it would be bad. No. You wouldn't even go anywhere. Ah! Hold on. Oh my, look at that beautiful sunset, Livy's. Better tie up your horse so it don't take off on you. Hello. Go see what Livy's has got for you. Bet you'll like it. Yeah, she didn't last time, did she? No. Did you turn the light on? Wow, they eat those steps. You didn't waste no time, did you? No wonder why you're so chunky. <laughs> you have no self-control. They need more food. You're right. They ate all the kelp, and they're almost out of goat mineral. I'll have to fill that up tomorrow. Oh. The moon's already out. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Pluto, this way. Come on. We gotta get another puppy dog to keep track of you. Yeah. Come on. Let's go. This way. Ah! All over. Look at that sunset. See how it's looking. Oh, it looks delicious. I better check the temperature. Yeah. Ooh, it looks delicious. Skin's delicious. I don't think it is. Mm. It's going to be any too good. It sounded like it was. You want to scoop that stuff out? One bite? Hot, but good. Wow. I'm going to try a piece of the chicken. Yeah, it's good. What do you do? You have to watch the video. <laughs> Skin. It's hot. I'm just gonna get both of that mm. Good, huh? Fresh. What? Fresh. Fresh. We need the YouTube views. Scarf looks so beautiful. Don't let it drip. That's why I didn't bring it over here. Don't let it drip. Don't let it drip. Don't let it drip. Don't let it drip. Is there different things that you do this time of the year to get ready for the up and coming growing season? Is there Things you look forward to this time of the year and hope everybody's having a great holiday season. Hope everybody's looking forward 
to the next spring and the new growing season. I know we are. We're looking forward to starting some new projects, getting our hands back in the dirt, and just having a great year. Thanks for coming along on our journey with us, and we'll see you guys right back here in the next video.